Hey there, I'm PJ with the High Mountain Homestead and today I'm talking all about what it's like to homestead in Utah. I did not grow up in Utah. I actually grew up in Southern California, so did my wife. And so um, you could say we're imports to the state. And uh, part of the reason Utah is so appealing to us is, is that it allows us to live that balanced life between uh, you know, city life and homestead life. We really do kind of get the best of both worlds here. So in this video, I'm going to be going over really what that's like. What are some of the uh, cautions and bummers about it? And also how we make it work for us out here. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm glad to have you. We talk all about better plants, better soil, and better animals. So if any of that's up your alley, consider subscribing. But today, I'm specifically talking about what it's like to be homesteading in the beehive state, Utah. Stay tuned. Okay, so I mentioned the, that I'm not from Utah, and for those people that are also not from Utah, realize that like most states, there's a lot of diversity within the state. So Utah, there's really kind of three main areas. There's, uh, you know, southern Utah, northern Utah, and then the Wasatch Front is what I would call it. The Wasatch Front is, is uh, a more populated area, and, uh, you know, Salt Lake City, uh, Provo, those are all along the Wasatch Front, I would say. And so we're in Utah County, which is the southern half of the Wasatch Front. So we're, we're in a more populated area. We're on an acre and a quarter. Um, right here, I'm in the pasture. Our pasture is divided uh, in two. So in the back half, we actually have uh, five sheep, which I think is a little much for my property. I'm going to go down to four ewes next year. But, see there's proof? Man, when they take naps, they look dead, especially from a distance. Um, they're not dead. And there's a treehouse that is, quite honestly, pretty scary and was built by the previous owners. And I haven't gone up beyond the second story because I'm too scared. Okay, let me just jump to what most people who are tuning into this video, what they want to see. You probably know Utah is a very dry state. It's actually the second driest state in the nation. Arizona has us beat. Um, so you might be wondering, what is irrigation like? So in much of Utah, people own their water rights. And in fact, this property used to have water rights. And for reasons that I cannot fathom, the people before us sold their water rights and instead decided to pay the city um, hundreds of dollars a month to water this property with culinary water. I don't understand it. Doesn't make sense to me. Um, and so we're on a pressurized irrigation system. So we get, um, we have city water. Look at that of the sun, geez Louise. Um, so we're on city water here, but it is a flat fee. Um, we're an acre and a quarter, and our city measures your water price by how big your, your acreage is. And it's a flat fee, you use it, um, and you can use as much as you want. Uh, it's not measured. Um, and so our property is an acre and a quarter, and I think we pay like 110, 115 a month um, for our water. So it's a little bit steeper than most, but I also still get to work in like the city and have like a like a real job aside from this that that pays pretty well. So you know, if you think about water being really our biggest expense to to homesteading here, you know, 115 bucks a month is not that bad um, for for all things considered. So, not not that huge of a bummer. The the thing that did uh, stink is that we didn't get the benefits of pressure here is because they didn't have pipe before us. Um, and so we we had to drop a few thousand dollars to get uh, some pipe in. We don't have it all the way through the pasture. Uh, rather, we have a spigot. Turn around here. Um, we have a spigot right, light up my finger right there, um, that we just run hoses and we have sprinklers. So we have, we have great pressure though. Like we're, we're able to run, you know, uh, three or four rainbirds across the whole property. Um, each one covering, depending on this nozzle head, covering, you know, 30 to 50 feet in diameter. So, so how do we water, um, or what is it like here? It's okay. Um, in the summertime, it is stressful because I don't have them on timers or anything, so uh, it's just a lot of water that we need. And I feel bad about using so much of this water, but with our regenerative farming techniques, I think we use a lot less water than um, 
than I think others maybe do. And I think having sheep out here, they really help kind of add a good microbiome to the soil. And that requires less water as well because it's a lot more self-sustaining. So um, it is a bummer to use that much water in such a dry state. But again, we're practicing regenerative practices. So we're, what's the phrase? Uh, we're working with what we got. I don't know. There's probably more clever phrase than that. But um, we're doing what we can. We're trying to do our part. So I didn't grow up here. So I, I wasn't in fourth grade in Utah where I'm sure you learn all about the Beehive State history. Um, but I do know that there is a really great um, culture of sustainability here, likely driven from the uh, early Mormon pioneers that settled Utah. And so it's really hard to find people that don't know how to can here, um, except for this guy. I actually haven't learned that yet. We didn't have a good enough harvest to justify it. And I grew up in Orange County, so we just didn't can. We just didn't can there. Um, and so it's really nice. Like a lot of people, especially like um, the generation older than me, so many of those folks know how to can and do it frequently. Um, and a lot of people keep backyard chickens here. Uh, a lot of people make their own sourdough bread, uh, make their own jams. And, and I love it. I think it's really cool. So um, while not everyone is sitting on, at least down here, not everyone's sitting on properties bigger than an acre and, you know, farming and, and stuff on it. Uh, we, we do share a community of sustainability. And really when it comes down to it, homesteading is, is part of the sustainability culture. So it's really nice. Um, you have some people that are like, why are you doing this again? Uh, but most people uh, just think it's cool. And, and I like that. I like being able to, to fit in and, and swap, swap ideas with people that, uh, that are part of the sustainability culture. Okay, let me tell you about a downside though. A downside of homesteading in Utah is we have really severe seasons. So our summers can get very, very hot. Um, we're not the hottest place in the nation, uh, but I did mention we're the second driest. Um, but we do get really hot summers. Uh, this summer we had weeks of high 90s and hundreds. And when you've got sheep, that can really bother them. Um, and chickens too, like my neighbor keeps uh, double or triple the amount of chickens that I do. And he said a few summers ago, he just had a bird die every day for, for a few weeks. And like, that's terrible. Like it can just get really, really warm here. So it's important to, to realize that our, our growing season uh, is unique. And so the way you get over, you know, the fact that Maybe you can't grow everything. Is figure out what you can grow. I do think that there's plenty of stuff to grow. I do think that we have a really great late summer harvest. Um, our zucchinis, our squashes, our salsa gardens, um, all of that stuff is, is great for the state of Utah. Um, but realize when winter hits or when first frost hits, it hits. Um, this week is, uh, we're in the middle of October as I'm filming this. And uh, we, we've had a few nights where it's frosted over and like, my squash patch is dead. Um, and so we got to get our, our squashes up, uh, which is a bummer because not all of them were done growing. So um, you just got to, you just got to know the season, which we did not, we planted a little bit too late, but we've had a great harvest up until that point. We've had zucchini coming out of our eyeballs. It feels like, which is great that we have chickens because uh, chickens will totally eat zucchini. Okay, one last thing that I will say about Utah. We have a lot of farmer's markets, which is pretty cool. Um, the downside is that only about half of the booths actually are farm goods. We have a lot of like cookies and like chicken sandwiches. I don't know, it's kind of kitschy up here. Um, Utah loves their sugar. Uh, but we do have plenty of farmer's markets. Oh, honey. So much honey around here. We're the beehive state, right? So a lot of beekeepers. There's a really strong community of beekeepers. Um, just, what was it, yesterday or two days ago, my wife met someone who was just selling honey outside of a grocery store. And she said, hey, we want to keep bees next year. And we bought some honey from them and basically left that conversation with, with a mentor who's, who's helping us get through that. So, again, just a really cool community. But, hey, that, that's what I have for today. So, uh Utah homesteading, it, it comes with some challenges just like homesteading would come with a challenge anywhere you go. Um, in the Wasatch Front, you know, I do get to enjoy having, having a great real job. 
and having a you know great great homestead um, I will say our homestead is probably on the smaller side you know we're just an acre and a quarter and uh, it's not cheap but I really enjoy it it allows it allows us to really live the best of both worlds so hey if you're in Utah um, and better yet if you're a homesteader uh, tell me what you like about it tell me what I missed I'm, I'm interested to know in the comments so drop me a comment and let's let's talk about um, so or maybe it's some of your challenges in your state I'd love to hear about that Thank you for watching. I'm PJ with the High Mountain Homestead. I hope you liked the video. If you do, like it on YouTube. That helps. Please subscribe. Um, we talk all about homesteading and the sheep, the chickens, the rabbits, the garden, the pasture, the grass, composting, the whole nine yards. So if any of that's up your alley, consider subscribing. But yeah, that's what I got for today. I'll see you on the next video. Thanks. Bye.